Now, what about understanding those SharePoint URLs? It's very possible that you are familiar with how URLs are structured. I find it interesting, though, that although a vast majority of us use the internet every day, that many haven't slowed down long enough to look at a URL and understand how it's structured. We want to take just a minute or two to do that now, because it will help you understand where you are in SharePoint and what you're really looking at. It's important to know that every element in SharePoint, from the site to the subsite, list or library, individual item, and even the view, is part of the URL. The URL for a top-level site will depend on how your organization has structured your implementation. Now, first of all, these are exactly the same as a regular internet URL. They also are exactly the same as the path to a file. In other words, you go from the largest place to the smallest place. We'll see some examples here. So here's a simple URL for a SharePoint site, http colon forward slash forward slash yourcompany.com forward slash team site forward slash home dot ASPX. What does that mean? Well, HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. That's the protocol or the method that computers use to transfer web pages back and forth. So that's basically saying, here's how you need to talk about this thing in order to get it back and forth from the server to the person who wants to see it. Yourcompany.com is your domain, your website. Of course, it could be a .net or a .org or anything else, but there's going to be some type of server here. From that point forward, we're simply identifying the equivalent of folders on a web server. So on yourcompany.com, on the computer, there's a folder called Team Site. In that Team Site folder, there's a web page called Home. Its actual file name is home.aspx. The home page of all SharePoint sites by default is called Home. They also end in .aspx, not HTM or HTML. That's because static web pages, pages whose content doesn't change unless someone comes in and manually makes the change, those are the ones that end in HTM or HTML. SharePoint is really a database on the back end that simply displays that database information in a web page on the front end. Because pages in SharePoint reflect data from the underlying database, they're called active pages. ASPX stands for Active Server Pages. You don't need to know these details, but it's kind of nice to know that pages we see in SharePoint will change automatically when people add, edit, or remove records from the database that's underlying SharePoint. Things like contacts, calendar items, tasks, and even files and libraries will change dynamically without somebody going in and physically changing the page every time that needs to change. Now that you understand a simple SharePoint URL, you can better decipher more complicated ones. I have a couple more examples for you. Here's what the URL might look like if it's part of Office 365 or if it's hosted as part of another domain. Just notice that it says yourcompany.sharepoint.com instead of just yourcompany.com. Here's another example. The important part here is that the beginning starts with HTTPS. The S stands for secure. That means that this site is not open to public internet access you have to have some type of username or password in order to access the site. We also know how to decipher this a little bit more. It's a secure site. It's pckeys.sharepoint.com. So it again is part of multiple websites hosted by this company. In this case, without even seeing the web page, we can tell that we're in a folder or a site called training. That training site has a variety of lists. One of the lists that it contains is a calendar, and we're currently looking at some view of that calendar. See, things really do get a lot easier. Even if you don't know everything there is to know, you can start to decipher them a little bit when you understand the syntax. Here's one last example, just because I like to make sure that everybody has something they can relate to. This is just a regular old file path, something that was stored on your C drive, in your My Documents folder, in a training subfolder, and it's actually a file called trainingcalendar.xlsx, which means it's an Excel file. Notice the basic structure is the same. We move from a server through folders to a file that's displayed as a web page, just like we would move from a computer hard drive through a series of folders, ultimately to a file. So being able to use a URL through a hyperlink or typing it in or any other method that you may have is really the critical step to getting into SharePoint. Navigating from there is simple, using several possible tools to do so. We're going to demonstrate those in another video.
But what happens if you aren't seeing or finding what you think you should? You entered the URL and didn't get an error, or maybe you even followed a link, but you can't see the site, the list, or the library that you're supposed to be accessing. The good news is there's only two reasons that could happen in SharePoint. Either you're in the wrong place or you don't have permissions to see it. This is actually due to a feature called the Security Trimmed Interface. What this says very simply is you must have at least read-only permissions to see content. Without permissions, it won't display in lists or libraries, it won't display in the quick launch, it won't display in the top navigation or in all site content. It won't even display in search results. If you ask me, this is actually a good thing for everyone because it means administrators aren't always bothered by people asking why they don't have access to something they can see but can't get into. More importantly for you, it means your view in SharePoint won't be cluttered with things that you can't access. It cleans it up and makes it easier for you to use, and that's always a good thing. We discuss SharePoint security in its own chapter, but for now, know the security trimmed interface means anything you don't have permissions to at least read will be hidden from your view. That means sites, workspaces, lists, libraries, and even individual items within a list or library. Now I know you think you're going to try to get around it, but these items are hidden in the list or library itself, the quick launch navigation, the top navigation, the all site content, and even the results if you try to search for the content. So trust me, you can't find it if you don't have access to it. Now, if you think you should be able to find what you're looking for and you just can't, be sure that you're in the right site, list, or library. Especially if they haven't been customized at all, a lot of SharePoint sites will look pretty much exactly alike. SharePoint is like real estate, location, location, location. Now, if you're in the right location and you still aren't seeing or finding what you think you should be, then you'll need to contact your administrator and ask them to provide you with the proper permissions. Remember that unlike a traditional website, someone you know may use it, recommend it, you may even see it on their screen. But unless you've been given permissions, you won't be able to access it yourself. All of these concepts about URLs and finding sites in the security trimmed interface take a little while to get through. So we're going to go ahead and end this video as part two and continue with my sites as our last and final part three.